All right, so let's pick up where we left off here, building a quiz using JavaScript, CSS, and jQuery. As of right now, we have the ability to start the quiz and select an answer, but nothing happens when we click Submit Answer. That's going to be our next event listener. So we're going to add an event listener for quiz anchor tag. This is going to be a click event since anchor tag, the anchor tag here is not actually generated after the page loads, but it's there when the page loads. So we're completely free to use the click event. And I hope that that's, um, that I've made that a, a, a little uh, easier to swallow when to use the on method. Use on click, right, on method with the first attribute being click when you're listening for click events on something that was generated by JavaScript. Right? We generated the LIs down here when we appended them to the UL inside of the quiz. Okay, This anchor tag, for instance, that's there when the page loads. And I get it. You say, well, TJ, there's LIs there when the page loads. There is. But right here, we clear those out. And when you attach event listeners like this with just the click method, they're attached directly to this anchor tag. So if it gets removed, then that event listener gets removed as well. Whereas the on method, well, that's actually attached to the UL. And nothing changes with the UL. Sure, we clear it out right here, but we also append LIs to it. The UL itself does not change. That's why the on click method is so much better in this case. That's why it's our go-to choice. So let's come back here. We need to prevent default. If you're not familiar with prevent default, just think of it as like, okay, an anchor tag has a default action, right? When you click on it in the browser, it kind of like goes somewhere, right? In this case, it's not going to go anywhere but reload the page because we're using this pound sign. But this prevent default will prevent that reloading of the page. It'll prevent the default action. If this actually said, you know, HTTP colon slash slash Google.com, Right? Without that prevent default, it would actually try to redirect the browser to google.com. This prevents that from happening. Okay, so we need to figure out which of these answers they clicked on before they click submit answer. And we've, we actually have a very easy way of doing that, right? Because we've assigned a class called selected. We can see that with the yellow here. but Here's the problem. Users might try to click submit answer before selecting an answer. So we have two ways of doing this. We could either hide the submit button until they actually select something, okay? Or we just give them a nice little message that says, I'm sorry, but you tried to submit an answer, you haven't selected one yet. Now one of the cool things about jQuery, and I think this will be better if we illustrate this in the console, if I come in the console and I select all LIs, okay, uh, okay, wow, all right, well, I guess using the console in JS bin is out of the question. Let's just open up the console built into Chrome developer tools. I'll move this down here. And that might have been a step that I skipped over in the last video, but DevTools, you can get to a number of different ways. Right click and inspect on anything to bring up the HTML DevTools. Uh, come up here in the corner of Chrome, go to More Tools, uh, Developer Tools, or you'll see this little shortcut here on Mac, Command Option I. And I believe on Windows it's Control Alt I. And that will bring up DevTools. Okay. So if we go to the console here, and let's just clear this all out. And we say, okay, how many, go ahead and select the allies, right? We get this like jQuery method back um, and it tells us, look, there's four, we can actually see it, li um, with the ID of zero, li with the ID of one, li with the ID of two, that also has a class selected, right? So here's the thing, jQuery is always returning back to us an array. See how it has this property length? So we could do something like li.length and it'll tell us there's four. So if we did something like, okay, well, li with the class selected dot length, it says there's one. Now let's, let's rerun this, start it, and now let's do that same thing. li with the class of selected, zero, it's empty. That means we could easily, it's technically null, right? But that means we could easily wrap that in an if statement. So we could say if 
li class selected, then we'll go ahead and run some code, right? Uh, sorry, if li class selected dot length, then we'll go ahead and check their answer. Otherwise, else, we'll just give them a simple alert that says, please select an answer. Okay. Now we'll try this. We'll try submitting without selecting anything, and we get, please select an answer. All right, so we did some error checking there, right? Preventing, and, and as a developer, you tend to go through this process where you're trying to think of every little edge case, any way, I, I like to translate edge case as in, what ways are users gonna try to break this, right? And that's a great example of that. So we know they selected something. We need to get what they selected and more specifically, get that ID. So we're gonna create a variable called guess. And then we're gonna grab the li with the class selected. And then we're gonna use the jQuery attribute ID. Okay, the, sorry, the jQuery method attribute to get the value of ID. Now that's gonna go into our variable guess here. And one of the things I like to illustrate to students is if you're not sure if that worked, try a console.log guess okay we'll open up the console here and we'll run a little test select a color hit submit answer and we can see right there guess is two guess is three guess is one guess is zero do 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 right so we know that we're getting that id and that's perfect because remember we set up our questions so that they had three properties a title an array of answers and then the index that corresponds to the correct one so we just want to compare this. Now the only problem right now is that we wouldn't be able to strictly compare them because I don't know if you notice in the console here, but it's actually giving us back a string, whereas the number or the correct property is actually a number. So the correct answer for this question is blue, right? But one is not going to triple equals. I'll show you here. Can one triple equal one? No. One can double equal one, right? And it's just matching the values there. The values match, but the types don't. So we have a couple questions. We could either just use the double equals, okay? Or we could do something like wrap this string in the, in the built-in JavaScript function parse int, okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to basically grab the number out of there and now represent it as a number, okay? To show you what that looks like, let me just show you the result of parse int one as a string and we get one as a number as an integer right parsent also means if i did 1.55 i'm getting one okay it's just parsing out the integer okay there is a parse float which will allow you to include those decimal places as well okay so with that out of the way let's go ahead and do that down here we'll just wrap this entire call to the ID in parsent, okay? Uh, and just to double, we'll just double check in our console one more time, blue, submit, now we get numbers, not strings. Perfect, okay. So let's go ahead and pass this guess to our function. We created a function, right? Check, answer, and we'll pass guess into that, okay? Now check answer, we need to modify it now to accept guess. And we're basically going to do this same line here. We're gonna go grab the current question, okay? And then we are just going to do a quick comparison. If question.correct is equal, triple equals to guess, then that means they got the answer right. So we can take that score variable we created up here and go ahead and increment it. So we'll do score plus plus. That is a shortcut in JavaScript to basically say, Whatever the score is, add one more to it and set that as the value, okay? Now, there's really not an else here. We're not doing anything special with this quiz to where we're gonna tell them, sorry, you got the answer wrong. This was actually the right answer. Let me explain to you why. In this case, we are just only performing a task if they got the question right, we're updating the score, okay? So the only thing left to do from here is to show the next question. How do we do that? Well, we have this variable, current question, right? That's been keeping track of what question we're on. We'll just increment that as well. 
And again, we're not putting that in an else or in the if because that'll happen whether they get the answer right or not, right? So now that we've updated current question, all we have to do is call show question. And that will now show the next question because show question doesn't care if we're on answer one or two or three or what have you. Let's test this out. Where I'm just going to select green to kind of work our way through this. As you can see, it is progressing now through each one and then nothing happens on the last one. I shouldn't say nothing happens. We actually do get an error down in the console, right? Which says cannot read property title of undefined. What does that mean? Well, that's this first line here. Undefined is question, and that's because current question was zero, then it was one, then two, then three, and now it's four. Right? We checked the answer on this question. We updated it to four. We called show question. Show question says, wait, this is index zero, one, two, three. There isn't a fourth. So all we need to do is in show question, or we could honestly do it down here, we could just say, you know what, if current question is greater than or equal to, we'll say greater than or equal to, for whatever reason, if it jumps to, I don't know how that's possible, but if it's greater than or equal to questions.length, you know, as in the number of questions in the array, then call show summary. Otherwise, call show question. So we're just basically putting that check in that says, okay, we are still within a, a range that makes us safe and okay to get the next question, or we're not. We're at the end, we need to show the summary. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do in show summary is take that quiz and hide it. Then we're gonna take the summary and show it. And let's just run this now and make sure this is working. So I can start, which hide start shows quiz. I'll go ahead and answer every question as green. And then it gets to the end, it hides the quiz and shows the summary and says, congrats, you scored X out of Y correct. Let's fix that text. Okay, so that's within summary, we have a paragraph tag and we're just gonna change its text. You know what, we're just gonna literally type this out. Okay, and we will just concatenate in values for x and y. So you scored x, that's where we'll concatenate in there, our score variable. Out of y, well that one is a little bit of JavaScript math here. We are just going to take questions that length, right? We already know how many questions we have. One of the things you'll notice I'm doing with this is not one place did I say there's four answers or there's four questions. I have tried to keep this as scalable as possible. Right now, we could add questions willy-nilly. We can reorder questions. We can reorder answers. We could have different answers for each question. As long as we map our correct to the right answer, this is completely scalable. It could go from one question to 10,000, right? There's really no limit. And that's the point. That's what you want to do. You want to write code that's scalable and can work for the future. So we change that text. So now if we go through, I really should only get one right because only one is green. Sure enough, congrats, you scored one, our score variable, out of four. So we really have one step left, and that's to restart the quiz, okay? So we need to go ahead and add an event listener. We actually don't need to do anything else here in show summary, okay? And we're missing a function. We need a function for restarting the quiz. Restart quiz. Won't do anything yet. But let's go up here and add our event listener. So within summary, when we click on that anchor tag, again, that was there when the page load, loaded, so we can just use the click method. We will prevent default. And there's a couple things we need to do. Of course, we need to hide the summary div. We need to show the start div. Well, I guess, do we? If we're restarting the quiz, do we need the start page? No, we can just go back to the quiz. So we'll show that. That's just a decision I've made. That's a design decision. You could decide, you know what, for my quiz, I actually do want it to go back to the welcome screen, okay? And look, the easy route here is we can just reload the page, right? But let's be a little classier than that, okay? All right, now we're gonna show the quiz, but we gotta do a couple things. Where do we start from the beginning? We started with score at zero and current question at zero. Let's just copy that. And we'll come down here and pop it in. 
and we'll just remove that let keyword, right? Because of the fact that those variables already exist. So we'll just set score back to zero and current question back to zero. And what's left to do? Show question. Now the only problem in here is I put all this here in this event listener when I actually made a uh, function for this. So let's just move all this down into that function. Restart quiz, again, hides the summary, shows the quiz, sets the score back to zero, the current question back to zero, and then calls show question. Let's try it out. And we'll try to guess everything right. Blue, green, yellow, orange. You got four out of four. Restart. Now let's answer them all wrong. Yellow, blue, orange, green. Zero out of four. four. All right, and let's do our green, 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 green. One out of four. We have a fully functional JavaScript quiz app. Okay, now it's not the prettiest thing to look at, but functionality wise, we're done. And that is the point. You always try to tackle the functionality first. We all know this, is, this was gonna be the hardest part, all this JavaScript, right? But now we can go back and actually fill out our CSS. I want you to see it's really not a lot of JavaScript, right? At the top, we have our variables, okay? We could really compress questions down to one line and that would look a lot neater. In our center area, right, within our document.ready callback function, we have four event listeners. When you start, when you select an, uh, an answer, when you submit that answer, and then when you restart the quiz. Then we have pieces of functionality. How do I show a question? How do I check an answer? How do I show the summary? And how do I restart the quiz, right? Our functions are our pieces of functionality. Cool, pretty easy. Um, that's it for this example. I hope that this was really helpful. Um, and moving on from this, I will try to put something together for part three where we will actually go through in style. The main reason I wanna do that is I wanna show how complex people tend to make CSS when it really doesn't need to be that complicated. All right, thank you guys for joining.